Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, for being with us. Looking around the globe at water, water is life. And as we've added to this in these programs on the Emerald Planet TV, water and oxygen is life. But we're looking at the creation of new water. And this comes from storm water, groundwater, whatever they call it in your community. It's the same. It is that in many communities, there's drought. Other communities, there's an excess of water just as what we're having in most of the East Coast these days of the United States and many other countries around the globe. So how do we handle that? So this particular show is going to be about how do we capture, store, and then process and use this new water so we reduce the amount of the existing water that we're taking from the ground, the rivers, and the lakes, and to use this water in ways that's most purposeful and at the same time will help citizenry. We have with us a real expert on this stormwater capture. This is Brian Rogers. He's the Director of Conservation and Sustainability for the Constituent Services Worldwide. And we're going to be talking about the River Smart Homes Program of the Department of Energy and Environment in Washington, D.C., and we're going to label this one safe water save the rivers and the streams brian welcome to the emerald planet tv well good afternoon sam how are you i am doing fantastic it's good to have you with us and uh thank you very much for your leadership on the rain barrels which is what we're going to be talking about and all different aspects of the rain barrels but csw tell us a little bit about that and then let's really get into this save water, save the streams and rivers? All right. Well, CSW is uh, in Washington, D.C. The area is divided into wards. So CSW is a Ward 7-based company, uh, which is located in Southeast D.C., was a, its origins. And uh, it started from just a little program that we were renovating a, a basketball and tennis court that was uh, unused. And so we got a grant through the Department of Environment and River Smart Communities Program. And we removed the surface of the tennis court to set up uh, and use the understones to build a community garden. So that's where it started from. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've uh, been working with uh, the Summer Youth Employment Program, uh, Green Zone Environmental Program, and we've established a relationship with the University of District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. And from there, we developed a program called the National Green Infrastructure Certification Program. Well, now we do serve, we train and educate district residents for job training uh, in the program. So okay. we're actually producing green employees. That's fantastic. Uh, the River Smart Homes Program, and we're looking at uh, a, a teacher here that's actually showing off one of your rain barrels, but River Smart Homes, and then they of course have River Smart Communities. Why are they focusing on rain barrels? Well, one of the it's just one aspect of a five, uh, say five stage program. Uh, the program itself consists of five elements that are offered to DC residents. Uh, one is trees, two rain barrels, three 
rain gardens for what they call bayscaping, which is basically conservation landscaping. Mm -hmm. And five is permeable pavement. Mm -hmm. So they offer these uh, options to district residents. They come out and do uh, an audit, see what elements you can put in your yards. And then from there, uh, they tell you which ones you can move, use. And we, uh, our department basically is for brain, guard, brain barrels. And that's what I do. I do the installations of the rain barrels for them. Mm -hmm. Well, and also you're doing much more than that because you're doing the consultancy. You're actually very much involved in uh, training. And it's quite impressive what you're doing. We saw the first rain barrel, a nice round one. Uh, and this is called the Hydra. So why do we have these different shapes as far as the rain barrels? Well, uh, because Washington, D.C. has sometimes postage stamp yards, a very unique setup situation. So the barrel options kind of give homeowners the the option of turning to uh, whatever fits their yard and their aesthetics the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the uh, style of this one. Actually, we've installed one of these and also the uh, the round ones. But uh, looking at the uh, gutter pipe coming down, you have a splitter in this uh, downspout. Tell us what that splitter is all about and how does that work? And actually, how does that work in concert with the barrel or the hydra itself? Well, that, that instrument is called a wide diverter. If you look closer at it, you'll see a little metal uh, extension. And that's how you switch the barrel from being on and off. Mm -hmm. So whichever direction that switch is pushed tells the direction that the water is going to go. Mm -hmm. So if it was to push to the right, it's going into the right. If it's pushed to the left, it goes to, to the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the whole thing about this is really to control it. And uh, now I, I put this one in purposely because I want to show people that you actually really do some work. And uh, let me go back to that. And this is very important as far as these tools are concerned, because in your training, you're teaching people that have never been involved many times with uh, any kind of hands on experience or working with tools. So what are we looking at here as the basic kit? in order to be able to work with the rain barrels, the hydra, and the other forms that we're gonna soon be seeing? Well, basically though, you know, Sam, you're exactly right. Uh, those are the, some of the tools of the trade. The big yellow instrument you see there is what's called a sawzall. That's what we use to cut down spouts and, and gutters. Mm -hmm. uh, inside that bucket, you have a very old cornucopia of tools because as many, uh, decisions that you have to make in uh, installing the barrels is as many downspouts as a variety of downspouts that you have. So you have to be prepared for a number of uh, different situations. So if, what I like to say is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out how to, to get that water into the barrel. So what's flipped over on the ground is a assortment of screws and uh, other devices that are different uh, connections that we use to change the from Phillips to flathead screws and things like that. So, right, yeah. uh, it's a big, big, big thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's very important what you're doing, and to have the right tools is absolutely critical. I was raised on a ranch, and uh, I mean, we had boxes of different kinds of implements and all that. But looking at the the side of this, this is the Hydra again. Tell us what we're seeing here. We have this hose coming out. Uh, we have a red spigot at the bottom. Uh, and then we actually have cinder blocks, uh, you know, all the way under this. Tell us this configuration and why is this important? So uh, number one is always going to be balanced. Uh, you got to make sure that that barrel, when it's filled up with water, can handle and sit still in the, the exact place you want it to. So that's the configuration of the cinder blocks. Over the course of time, we've learned that uh, certain co configurations work best for certain barrels. Mm -hmm. So this is one that works well for the Hydra. As you can see, this is one of the uh, unique uses for the Hydra. It 
is able to run flat up against wall surfaces. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, unlike the octagonal barrel, which would sit in, and protrude more into say walk spaces and, and uh, ways you can pass by, mm -hmm. this Hydra is a slimmer model. So it kind of runs north and south more. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see the little black hose that's going in there, that's for overflow. So when the barrel uh, fills, it gets to that point, automatically the water will come down that tube and into the existing downspout. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then at the bottom, you have the uh, the red-handled uh, spigot. Yeah, that's a, what we try to do is always assess which way the homeowner would, is going to use the water. So we always try to point the spigot in the most convenient way to service the, the resident. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Now here's the the uh, octagonal one, uh, very different configuration of what we just saw. So tell us the the difference between these two besides just their shape. Uh, and also we can see there's a great deal of difference as far as where you're locating it uh, at the house itself. Well, this one is called a Riverside or rain grid barrel. Uh, as you can see, it has an extension on the back and much like where the Hydra is, the Hydra has that device that switches the barrel on and off. The black box on the back of the, this barrel serves as the same thing. It has, it has a tube that's inserted into the back of the box and you pull that tube out for maintenance. And also it has on the back of it, whether it's in collect mode or bypass mode. When it's in bypass mode, uh, it will go down to the downspout that's underneath of the uh, box. Mm -hmm. So that's how it bypasses. It won't go into the to the barrel. It go out through the uh, downspout extended at the bottom. Now, why is it so important? We saw this with the hydro where you have the bypass or the overflow unit. Why is that so important? Good point. Uh, that's part of the winterization process. Mm -hmm. you, during the winter, of course, you don't want frozen water inside of a barrel. Uh, these barrels are mostly recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, there can be expansion and contraction and therefore do some kind of damage to either spigots or the barrel themselves. Okay. All right. Now, these uh, we're going to go through these quickly because we've just uh, run out of time. Uh, just uh, just a snort, short snippet of each of these, uh, why they're different, why they look different. And then we only have about uh, 60 seconds left to do this. And the last okay. question is, what do you see for the expansion of this River Smart Homes Barrels Program uh, in the future? But let's let me just go through these and tell us what you think we're going uh, and uh, we'll just let people see these, but where we're going over the next five, 10 or 15 years, Brian. Okay, so basically these barrels are all barrels that technically would be supported under another aspect of the Real Smart Home Program called the Rebate Program. This barrel here is also uh, with the D District Department of, D sorry, DC Water has a program also called Downspot Disconnect where these barrels are used to help disconnect. It's the same purpose basically as the River Smart Homes barrel. This is a different kind of barrel. Uh, this is a Bushman, uh, totally different kind of barrel, but about the same gallon quantity as these round ones. Here, you see in a technique called daisy chaining. This is where you make two barrels function as one. So the barrel that's up above the lower barrel serves as the catcher and then when that fills up, it transfers into the lower barrel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go on this. What do you see for the expansion next five, 10 or 15 years? And you got about 10 seconds now to do that. Just different variations of barrels, because like I said, the, the, the unique situations of DC's barrels, I mean, DC's homeowners, and uh, just more involvement from the community as they get more educated in the reasons why they use these barrels. This is Brian Rogers uh, from the uh, Constituent Services Worldwide as we create the Emerald Planet.